biology topics. Our first chapter, Biological Classification. We were in a halfway and we discussed Kingdom Monera and the next kingdom is Kingdom Protista. Kingdom Protista, as you have studied in our ninth class, it consists of members which are unicellular but eukaryotes. Okay, so the kingdom protista consists of unicellular eukaryotes. You know what is meant by an unicellular organism and you also know what is an eukaryotic organism. It consists of a true nucleus. So all the members of kingdom protista consists of true nucleus, membrane bound nucleus. And it also contains cell organelles like mitochondria, Golgi, okay, etc. Then, you know that this members, most of these members are aquatic and also seen in our terrestrial habitat and some can inhabit even our body as parasites, okay. And some members are photosynthetic and that means these members are seen almost in every place. Okay, and let us discuss the different groups under Kingdom Protista. The Kingdom Protista consists of the major groups, chrysophytes, the first group, chrysophytes. Chrysophytes are known as golden brown algae. Anyway, the first members under Kingdom Protista, the first group is chrysophytes. The next group, dinoflagellates. And the third group, euglenoids. Fourth group, slime molds. So this is the second group. Then third group, euglenoids. Fourth group, slime molds. And the fifth group, protozoans. These are the five groups of organisms under kingdom protista. Okay. Then the first group, chrysophytes. The two common members under chrysophytes are diatoms and desmids. Okay. Chrysophytes consist of two common members named diatoms and desmids. Some of the members were earlier under algae and they were named as golden brown algae. Golden brown algae or golden algae. So keep in mind the two common members under chrysophytes are diatoms and desmids. And we can just discuss the characteristics of chrysophytes based on the example diatoms. Diatoms, this particular member, navicula. Navicula and pinnularia are examples of diatoms. Navicula and pinnularia are examples of diatoms. They remain float on the water surface. Mainly they are seen in oceans. So, with this typical example of diatoms, we are going to discuss the characteristic of chrysophytes. Okay, this diatoms possess silica rich cell wall. Siliceous cell wall. Okay, the diatoms contain silica rich cell wall and this cell wall remain as two overlapping halves. You can see in the figure like the two halves of a soft box, its cell wall is. Okay, so it is having a siliceous cell wall which remain as two overlapping halves. So that is by the name diatoms. Okay, so diatoms have silica rich cell wall. Then because of this silica deposit, I mean when the diatoms die after the lifespan when they die, when they get deposited at the bottom of the ocean, this is forming a silica rich soil which is known as diatomaceous earth. So keep in mind diatomaceous earth is nothing but a gritty soil. The soil rich in uh, silica deposited walls, silica cell walls of diatoms. Okay, when they perish, they get deposited at the okay, bottom of the sea. Okay, this soil, gritty soil is known as diatomaceous earth and this gritty soil has great use in industries. It is used in filtration of oils, syrups, etc. Okay, so diatomaceous earth we excavate, we use it for our um, benefits. Okay, so just keep in mind diatoms having this type of economic uh, importance. 
So another important feature about the atoms or the chrysophytes, they are the chief producers of ocean. The atoms are the main producers of ocean. Chief producers of ocean. Okay, that means these members are photosynthetic. They are the major producers of ocean. Keep in mind these two facts about the atoms. The atoms belong to chrysophytes or the golden brown algae. Examples are navicula and pinularia. And very important feature, they are the chief producers of ocean. And another important feature, they have a silica deposit cell wall, deposited cell wall, which help in the formation of diatomaceous earth, which we are using for filtration of oil, syrup, etc. and other industrial purposes. Okay, that's all about the diatoms as for your book, that's enough for you. Then, dinoflagellates, the next group. Dinoflagellates, as the name suggests, it's having, mm, these members are having two flagella. Okay, you can just see that one flagellum is seen, it's a short flagellum, it's horizontally in a uh, ridge, in a groove of the body. The other flagellum you can see is a longitudinal flagellum. So, dinoflagellates contain two flagella, one horizontally in a groove and the one is a free flagella, flagellum. Then, see, these dinoflagellates have thick cellulosic plates on body. Important feature, these dinoflagellates contain a very thick cellulosic plates all over the body. It's very hard and felt as an inert thing. Okay, so the dinoflagellates are possessing very thick cellulosic plates deposit on the body surface. And another important feature, some more or almost all dinoflagellates are differently pigmented. Some remain brown color, red color, orange color, blue color. They are differently pigmented. You know, the red tide is due to a dinoflagellate gonilax. The red tide is due to a dinoflagellate gonilax. Okay, the red dinoflagellate gonilax is responsible for producing uh, the red colored tide. Appearance red color for the tide. Red tide phenomenon you are familiar. This is due to a red dinoflagellate. Okay, and some members of the dinoflagellates, they release toxins to kill the prey. Okay, to escape from the predators. So that means... They are releasing, some members are releasing toxins. So keep in mind, like these members, chrysophytes, these are also photosynthetic. Okay, these are also photosynthetic. And also they are marine. Like dinoflagellates, I mean like chrysophytes, dinoflagellates are also marine, photosynthetic. They possess two flagella, they have a thick cellulosic plates all over the body and they are differently pigmented, green, blue, red and differently pigmented and red tide is caused due to a red dinoflagellate gonilax. Another example is gymnodinium. Okay, gymnodinium is another example. So what is drawn here is gymnodinium. Okay, which is the other member? Gonilax. Red tide, red dinoflagellate. Okay. Then our next group, euglenoids. You are very familiar with the member euglena. Okay. Another member is perinema. Perinema. Okay. Euglena, perinema. And what is drawn here is euglena. Okay. And you know euglenoids. The member euglena, you know, it's having, it's not as a connection link between plant and the animal. Because it shows mixotrophic nutrition. Mixotrophic nutrition means it is both autotrophic and heterotrophic. The euglenoids, the connection link between connecting link between plant and animals, because it is showing both the type of nutrition. In the presence of light, it can perform autotrophic nutrition. It is photosynthetic. In the absence of light, they are heterotrophic. They can swallow things, food things. Okay, so that is why they are uh, considered as a connecting link. So euglenoids, the first feature, they show mixotropic nutrition. And till here and here, you members you have seen, they are having a very thick cell wall. Cell wall is present, 
but this is having a proteinaceous membrane only there is no cell wall okay body is covered by a proteinaceous membrane its name is pellicle so the body is surrounded by pellicle no cell wall okay so the euglenoids members are covered by what a protein membrane known as pellicle and they are mostly seen in stagnant water aquatic mostly seen in stagnant water and interestingly their pigments they also contain pigments like plants and their pigments are similar to higher plants the pigments of euglenoids show similarity to higher plants that's about the euglenoids few features only for you to study then the next group slime mold you know from the name itself you got the point it's it was earlier among mold mold fungi okay see the slime mold you can see it's felt as many cellular it's a floating body of this slime mold it's visible to our eye okay it's not a microscopic structure when the slime mold at the time of reproduction when they form the fruiting body its reproductive bodies reproductive structure it produces number of spores inside this parenchyma its fruiting body and this slime mold is forming a visible structure it's known as its fruiting body so what is drawn here is a fruiting body of a sporangium a fruiting body of what slime mold okay stemonitus like examples are there physarum stemonitus etc are examples another example is physarum okay about the characteristics of protist these are the saprophytic protist they are saprophytic they move i mean they inhabit the soil they move along with the twigs leaves fallen twigs leaves etc they can move along with that and at the time of reproduction they form a fruiting body okay the fruiting body is also known as plasmodium hmm and this fruiting this fruiting body is visible large structures this produces number of spores and this spores of dissemination will produce new slime mold okay so these spores are very highly resistant structures which can remain for years and they can later sprout and form the uh, organism highly resistant structures which can remain in uh, as dormant for unfavorable season and can sprout or germinate later okay that's about the uh, slime mold okay they are present in our terrestrial land itself this slime molds move along with the fallen twigs leaves etc in habitable soil and they at the time of reproduction they form a okay large massive uh, conspicuous structure fruiting body it's known as plasmodium it consists of produce number of spores they are actually sporangia they produce number of spores and these spores are highly resistant structures which can remain resistant for long time in the soil and can be germinated even after a long years okay our last group is protozoans you are very familiar this means protozoan means the primitive animals we can say the this were earlier considered some of the members were earlier placed under kingdom animalia the first member you are familiar amoeba the second member so you are familiar paramecium okay then the third member may be new to you is trichnosoma trichnosoma and the last member also may be uh, new to you it's plasmodium plasmodium which causes malaria okay plasmodium four members are drawn here to study four types of protozoans the first type of protozoans they are classified based on their locomotory organs the first type of protozoans and the protozoans the first type amoeboid protozoans amoeboid protozoans mean what they move with the help of pseudopodia amoeboid protozoans move with the help of pseudopodia the second type ciliate protozoan you can see there ciliated protozoans move with the help of cilia okay then the third type flagellated protozoan flagellated protozoans they move with the help of flagella 
example trypanosoma you can see flagella a then the last type sporozoans they are forming highly infectious spores and they are pathogenic too okay highly infectious spores they form example example is plasmodium which causes malaria okay among this these two are infectious to human causing diseases trypanosoma causes the sleeping sickness disease and plasmodium causes malaria okay this is a sporozoite different cells are seen in plasmodium this is one such a form and this causes malaria plasmodium causes malaria this one causes i mean trypanosoma causes sleeping sickness disease okay not very common in our place is common in north of northern regions of our country okay so these are the four types of four examples are drawn four types we can discuss with that the first member amoeboid protozoans they move with the help of false foot pseudopodia the second member ciliated protozoans they move with the help of cilia the third member is a flagellated protozoan and this is having an attached flagellum and a flexible free flagellum and the trypanosoma is an example for flagellated protozoan it causes sleeping sickness disease in human plasmodium is the next member it is having a spindle shaped body is uh, allowing wriggling type of movement like worms move wriggling movement and the plasmodium is causing a disease called malaria okay that is what is about the protista protista we can see different types of members in the kingdom okay again there are more different types you are studying it in very brief you know kingdom plantae consists of a lot many types of plants similarly kingdom protista consists of a lot many types of protist okay and the unique feature of all of them all of them are unicellular eukaryotes okay and there are difference in their cell wall even these two members you can see difference in the cell wall this member is not having a cell wall and that member is also not having cell wall okay and they show different types of locomotory organs great uh, varieties there in their structure okay in their locomotory organs in their nutrition in their habitat these are seen in the ocean these are seen in the stagnant water i mean paramecium etc are seen in the stagnant water okay this all different variety of habitat nutrition structures everything is there in the kingdom protista and a brief study only there for you study well and also study the diagrams okay thank you